Hi, I'm 32 years old and in my lifetime, I'm not going to be able to drive a car on some highways. That's because governments are going to start to only allow self-driving cars. Is that going to be Tesla full self-driving or another company that wins the race? Similar to riding a horse, that's me, you can still do that today, but not on most major roadways. There will always be a market for manual driving, similar to riding horses, but for most, Self-driving cars will be the best option. And why is that? Well, I shared 16 powerful reasons why self-driving cars are going to take over our roads in a past video. I'll link to it in the description. But the bigger question I'm trying to kind of get to today, how long will this transition take? When will you see self-driving cars everywhere, just not geofenced to certain cities? I don't have a horse in this race, but I have been keeping a very close eye for about a decade. I dived into researching self-driving cars way back then, and that was from more of an investment standpoint. At that time, some experts were claiming that it'd take about five years, but back then I believed it was way too optimistic. At that time, I predicted it'd take close to about 30 years for wide adoption of autonomous cars. So about 20 more years from today. And based on the trends that I'm still seeing, I'm sticking to that early prediction. But there are a few big keys to understanding this. By wide adoption, I mean over half the cars on the roads will be fully self-driving, not assisted self-driving. The first key to understanding this is that the average car life expectancy is roughly 12 years. So once every new car that's sold is fully self-driving, it'd take about another 12 years to replace most of the existing cars or the fleet on the roads. Now, there are gonna be plenty of speed bumps pun intended, but I don't believe technology and costs will be the main barriers. Heck, you can buy a Tesla Model 3 for close to $40,000 today, and that drops even lower, closer to about $30,000 if you get tax credits and the factoring in the gas savings. It's the lowest cost it's ever been, especially if, uh, if you would inflation adjust it. On top of that, these new cars, they all have improved FSD hardware and software. Now, there's a long tail of driving situations to solve. For example, plenty of bad weather conditions or weird objects falling off of another car in front of you. But already, Tesla has solved about 99% of driving time. And some other autonomous driving companies might be ahead, such as Waymo. Although most of those other competitors, they're geofenced with different sensor suites that include LiDAR. But either way, it's now a march of the nines which are exponentially more difficult to solve. By that, I mean that solving the next 0.9% of self-driving might take a similar amount of time, or effort at least, not time, as the first 99%, and so on. But to put it in a better perspective, human drivers are not 100% fault-proof. Tesla full self-driving, it's clumsy, but is it already safer than the average human driver? Most of the data I can find, it puts it pretty close today, and it just really depends on the driving area and situation. But either way, in a few more years, along with more data in the door, it should be vastly better. With anecdotal evidence, or more so media coverage, it is going to take a while for people to trust that self-driving cars are actually safer. Headlines, they skew reality for Tesla. I also shared a past video on what media likes to do around these more exciting companies. I'll link to it in the description below. In my past full-time work, I wrote investing articles that would sometimes go out to an email list with over half a million people. But back on topic, technology experts have been calling for the end of Moore's law for years, but computing, it continues to advance. Different levels of the stack are advancing exponentially. On top of that, costs are coming down. Although technology and costs are not the big barriers, Instead, the main barriers to a fully self-driving future, they come from public perception and regulatory changes, as well as some certain special interest groups. For example, it'll have a huge impact on car insurance or the industry. Premiums will drop and claims should drop as well, but that's less float for those insurance companies to invest. This also delays car manufacturers full switch to self-driving. Right now, in most situations, the driver always has to be ready to uh, take over if need be. And this keeps the liability on the driver's side. 
Nonetheless, the benefits of self-driving will far outpace the negatives. And I'm going to just leave you with one more big self-driving car prediction. Well, it's kind of a big trend a lot of people haven't noticed. Car ownership, it's going to drop faster. The American dream of owning a home and a car, it's really starting to change, or it's moving faster. Already, car ownership peaked close to 20 years ago. The average family in the U.S. owned about 2.05 cars in, uh, in 2006. Since it's come down and is closer to about 1.9 cars per household today. And I'm predicting this is going to decrease faster as self-driving cars become more common. Ride sharing will become even more accessible and cheaper per mile. One of the most expensive pieces to your Uber ride is the human driver. And driverless cars will replace them. I can do a much deeper dive into the logic behind my predictions here today on full self-driving autonomous cars. Uh, let me know in the comments if this is a topic you want to see more research on. And uh, don't forget to check out those other articles I mentioned. Many people overlook the huge benefits that are, we're starting to unlock already. Thanks for stopping by, and if you found these ideas interesting, please tap that like button. It just motivates me to get myself in front of a camera and share some more research.